Hi, welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. And today, we're gonna share with you our new smokehouse. All right, so today we are going to share with you how we went about building our smokehouse. Well, the first thing that we have to talk about is, you know, how it came to be. We, Robin and I knew we always wanted a smokehouse, but how did it come to fruition? Well, Breakaway Homestead came down and we gave them uh, about five to eight medium sized to small pigs. We uh, processed them for them and how they paid us for those pigs was they bought some materials and through labor. Well, as that weekend went along, it was Labor Day weekend, Wonderlust Homestead showed up and they started helping us out. And so we looked on Pinterest and we looked through all these different designs and Robin and I finally decided on one that we modified. So the very first thing we did was we picked our place and we laid out how things were gonna go. We took some spray paint, we spray painted it out and started walking around my homestead and getting cinder blocks and started to lay out the foundation to the smokehouse. So as we laid out the foundation, now we did it this way because we were using recycled materials from around our homestead. And so we laid it out first, one, to make sure we got all the right same size blocks and that we had enough blocks. <clears throat> we also did this to check the level to make sure we could get everything level and square. So we went around doing that and then once we got done and everything fit just right, that's when we started to mix the mortar. <clears throat> and then we mixed up the mortar, got the mortar mixed, and then we started laying the block. Now we went ahead and did this section first like this so that way the mortar could start to set before we really started moving on to the next section. We plotted out the spot for where our pipe was gonna go, and then, bam, we got all the block in laid with mortar. Then we started on the firebox. Now the firebox is one of the things, one of the materials that Breakaway bought for us. He got a uh, barrel adapter kit. Uh, it's one of those kits where you can take 55 gallon drums and turn them into a wood burning stove. Well, we bought that barrel adapt adapter kit just for the door. And so then we laid out that, the firebox, and we built the firebox out of re, uh, recycled materials, and we mortared all that. And that was pretty much the end of the first day. Okay, so now we're at the morning of day two. Now day two happened to fall on a Sunday, so it was kind of a lazy day. We really didn't get started till real late in the afternoon wonderlust homestead they had church uh patrick from breakaway homestead and i took this opportunity and we ran to lowe's and we purchased the osb and some two by fours and stuff that we needed <clears throat> and came back and pretty much got the measurements and got everything cut the way that we wanted and so that way it was ready for when wonderlust showed up and then when Wonderlust showed up, we had enough time in the day to go ahead and get the framework up, got the frame in. They took off because they had stuff that they had to do at their homestead. They had their responsibilities. Patrick and my son pretty much finished out the day by putting the OSB around the building. Then we built the trellises for the a-frame of the roof and this pretty much rolls us into day three day four uh blaze and i secured those trellises on the roof then we uh installed the osb for the roofing and then we also did our triangles for the fascia 
of the building and then we build out our sophic boxes and got all of that secure now this is where it starts to get a little bit time consuming because with the soffit boxes we used pallet wood well when it came to the pallet wood there were some things that we had to do to the pallets in order to make them weather resistant we had to take all of the nail holes and we made a wood putty out of sawdust and glue and we filled in all of the nail holes and then we sanded it all down and then we gave it a coat of Thompson's water seal then we installed it here on the building so then we got all of that done then we decided that we were going to continue using the pallet wood as lap siding now I had some footage of blaze and I putting that up but I don't know where it went um, so here's a picture of what it kind of looks like on the outside but again this was very time consuming because that Thompson's water seal had to sit for a day so we would cut out the, the uh, planks from the pallets sand them down coat them with the Thompson's water seal set them out to dry wait 24 hours and then blaze came up with the overlapping pattern that you see here and then so then we would cut them up and then come out here and install them and we would do this basically a wall at a time so that took three or four days to get all of that done then it was time to design our chimney now sticking with the pallets we built the chimney out of the pallet planks and did the same thing with it as we sealed it with the thompson's water seal for the outside the chimney installation was a learning curve for my son um, blaze decided that he was going to surprise me and try to have the chimney in when uh robin and i got home and so he went up there and at first he used a hole saw which is okay <clears throat> and he drilled his hole in with the hole saw but then instead of using a jigsaw for some reason my son decided to use a reciprocating saw and so then he started cutting around to try to make it fit and by the time uh robin and i got home we kind of had to I kind of had to help coach him a little bit and uh, get the chimney in there. Long story short, after a few trials of trimming it, he got it to fit and uh, we just caulked around it because uh, the fit was tight, but there was still, we had a rainstorm and rain was going down inside the chimney. And so we caulked around it just to prevent the rain from being able to get into the smokehouse then after the chimney was in we started working on the shingles now what we use for shingles is the same thing that we use for the lap siding we recycled pallet wood we had to go through the same process of removing the slats from the pallets patching the nail holes and then running the shingles just no different not any different than uh, what we did with the lap siding we overlapped them and it turned out really nice So after all that was done the next tricky thing was the door now the door presented its own unique sense uh, or unique challenges um, It wasn't exactly as square as we thought it was when we went to go start building the door either when my son built the frame for the door, that wasn't square, or this wasn't exactly square. Between you and me, I think it was the door frame. Wasn't there for it. I can't tell you if he used the speed square to double check himself or not. Um, but in the at the end of the day, it still turned out nice. <clears throat> Basically, what we did with that is we built the frame, and then we used more slats from pallets we secured them to the door, sanded it down, Thompson's water sealed it, and it's holding up really well. Now, Patrick and them, they did purchase the hardware for the door, 
and uh, Blaze install, installed a nice uh, critter proof door latch here and whammo the door is in all right so we covered the foundation build the firebox build the framing the uh, lap siding the shingles the chimney the door the only thing left we got left to talk about is the inside let's let a lot of this smoke escape for a second here Whew. it's doing its job so let's talk about the racks we have three racks inside here <coughs> they are made with uh, three quarter inch dowels and basically uh, we use two by fours to run along side the walls we with some falsener bits drilled into the two by fours secured the dowels in there and then secured them to the inside and as you can see the there's plenty of space to be able to hang some bacon a ham um all kinds of things and the dowels also act as racks that we could get some oven racks to be able to sit on there to be able to smoke a loin or whatever else we want now that a lot of the smoke's gotten out i'm going to take you in and let you see how we have the smoke coming basically in from the firebox out all right so you have basically seen our entire smokehouse now one of the things that we're doing right now the reason why there um there was smoke and nothing in there um, we didn't do it for dramatic effect for the video, even though, to be honest, it helped out real nice. But basically what we're doing is curing everything inside the smokehouse now. We're running smoke through it, hot smoke through it, to get everything to cure, to let all of the, the wood that's in there sweat. None of it is treated wood, but still to be able to get the smoke uh, impregnated in all of the the wood surfaces and stuff like that somebody asked a question on our instagram about the glue with the osb everywhere we read that you could you you could either use plywood or osb we went with the osb because um, it was cheaper um so we're curing it just to if any of that glue or whatever was to seep out it's going to seep out now and then pretty much get cooked away I guess for a lack of a better term and everything will get cured inside the smokehouse and then it'll be good to go now we will have some videos coming up the very first thing that we're gonna smoke in our smokehouse is bacon I mean duh right who's not, who's not gonna have a smokehouse and not the first thing you're gonna put in there is bacon we got some pork bellies from it was either from uh, Obama or Henry in the freezer where we've just been waiting for this opportunity so we are going to pull those out let those defrost we're going to cure this for a couple more days then uh, pull out those bellies and let them thaw out and then stick them in the brine and we'll have a video on that well i hope you this video has helped you guys out um, if you're thinking about building a smokehouse i sure hope that our video has uh giving you some ideas maybe even motivated you a little bit and uh, if you guys have any questions about our build whatsoever please leave them in the comments below if this is your first time here hey i hope this video has motivated you to subscribe well that's it for now don't forget about our live show every saturday night 8 p.m eastern standard time thanks for coming by the big bear homestead god bless and have a nice day.